we are starting today five days of a seminar, um, which will start for two days, which will last for two days. Uh, sorry, for two hours today, and then next week, up a week, and so for the next five weeks. Uh, let us all agree to be on time like we did today so we can uh, utilize our time and maximize it. We have a lot, a lot to learn. My aim is that when we'll finish this uh, uh, training, you will be able to have a grip on the system, not at, at expert level, but at least know how to operate the system well. Uh, before I continue, um, is my English okay? Do you understand? Quick one, Adam, Hectic, Infrasys, is it okay? Yes, yes, it's fine. Yes, Adam. Yes, yes. yes. Good. Um, the advantage is that we are not such a big audience, therefore we can be more specific. If you have questions on the way, uh, feel free to, this, to, to, to share, to ask, uh, but anyhow, I intend to do it in breaks. So I will start with the introduction and then coordinates editor. Maybe I will mix it together and then give you time for questions. So let's avoid any other, ah, before we continue, I just want to be sure. Do you have, all of you have ZW card 2021 service pack one with the version, uh, the one that works well with ZWCAD Civil. Are you aware of this one? Yes, I am. Rest of you. You don't know uh, what I'm talking about. Can, can you provide us a link for the software? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, First of all, just to make sure that all of us are using this um, ZWCAD. Okay, you can, okay, where is it? Sorry, let me go to the chat. I will open the chat now. Okay, in the chat I'm provide, sorry, I'll give it to everyone. In the chat, I'm providing, you have a file. Uh, op, op, all of you, please look at the chat. This is a file that been released by uh, ZWCAD with a special uh, hotfix that they released for Service Pack 1. This is the version that they release, which include adjustment to ZWCAD Civil. Not so important which ZWCAD Civil. If you use other version, the system might crash often. So again, if you open this file, which I shared with you on the chat, you can scroll down to your own, down below to your, to your own language, download and install. This version is the only one which we can ensure, I mean for 2021, not for 2020, which we can ensure that works with the latest ZWCAD Civil. I hope this is clear. Any question on that one? No. That's clear. If you go to the website, uh, of, uh, yes, please. What about the later uh, service packs? Service pack two, they released yeah. it. Uh, uh, they and, uh, yeah. Yes. They just released the service pack two, but unfortunately, when we tested it, it looks like they somehow missed this integration and created again what we call a memory linkage. So we are now fixing it and we would probably release a hotfix for Service Pack 2, but I don't know and I don't control on their development cycle. Usually take them at least two weeks. So for now, all our user, we recommend to use this hotfix that we, which I just shared with you. Uh, another thing, if you go to the downloads in Sivan Design, 
This is the latest version of ZW Card Civil. It's the same, same installation. Uh, the full setup is from here. And if you have uh, upgrades, you can do it from here. And if you want to download the trial version, you can do it from here. All these versions work with the same ZW card with Hotfix 2021, which I walk, talked about, or 2020, whichever you, will, you like. I hope this is clear. Let's start. Yes. Uh, I'm starting by running I'm starting by running this, the ZWK Civil, which I installed, which I've downloaded from our website. Whenever I run it, automatically it launches the ZWK. You don't need to run the two separately. It will automatically launch the ZWK. Okay, so this is the screen. I hope you can see the screen. Um, this is the screen. This is standard ZW card in, as I said, in, in um, this version, I'm using ZW card service flag one, and this is the version number, the build. This is the one that we tested. It works 100% with ZW card civil. This is ZW Cut Civil is on the top. I hope you can see. Is it too small or good enough for you? Uh, Gian from Infrasys, is it okay? It's a little bit too small. Too small. Let me change my resolution. Um, because I'm using with uh, 4K. Maybe this is the reason. Let me change the resolution to this one. Let me start the system now again. Okay, you got it? Is it better? Yeah, yeah, it's better, it's better. Okay, good. Yeah, um, the screen that you see on the side is, I will move them just for me to see if someone is writing to me or anything. Um, okay. So this is the screen. So let's see what we have. We have the ZW card, which is installed. And on top of it, we have ZW card civil. In fact, if, sorry to take you, since all of you are uh, uh, about to be, or some of you are already distributors, if I go to the task manager, just, just to let you understand, we have two processes here. We have the civil card, which is the ZW card, all right? We trap the ZW card, which works in the, process, in the background. It's not so important for you, just for you to understand how it works. Fine, what do we see? We see the ZW card menu on the top. File, view, topography, design, Airfox, general, and so on and so forth. We see the ZW card itself here below. Home, solid, annotation, insert, views. The regular standard ZW card, if we have Lisp or anything adds on, it will load it as it is. Here below, we see a coordinate editor. This is a text editor. We use it today. This is a text editor. I can just type here what I want, but we'll learn later on how to use it. If I want, I can close. Sorry. I can close this window by clicking here. And that's it. Now I have the full screen. I want to reload it, topography, coordinates, and I see it here below. So in short, this is what ZW Card Civil add to the system, add to the window. 
Any questions so far? No question. Okay, good. As you can see, when I start the system, it opens a file name, Nonem, Nonem project. ZW Cut Civil works with projects. Projects, project is a container that holds many files. So if I look inside this folder, it says C users, Shlomi documents, ZW Cut Civil, no name. I will find no name with a lot of files inside. In fact, if I go now to this same path, documents, users, users, users. Sorry, I'm on users already, on document, ZW Cut Civil. You'll find no name with many files. You see all these files are the files under no name project. There is born, there's a cup, there's sar, there's DCO, TCO. Some of them, we learn them later on. We learn how to use them later on. So each project has many files contained with it. And also a DWG names the project name underscore. So in fact, we have two, two projects which are vital. One is no name and one is prototype. No name is the default project. Whenever you all start your system, it runs with no name. You would don't work with no name. Every work we start, we find new project or open project. We don't work with no name. Don't work on no name. No name is when the system, la system launch. Another important file is prototype. Is prototype. Let me open the prototype. I'm going to file, open project. And here is the prototype project. You can see on the top, it says, see user da, 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 prototype. What's important in prototype? In prototype, we can define a lot of um, typical thing for our usage. For example, I want to choose which, for, if I have two ZW card installed on my system, let's say 2020 and 2021, and I want to choose which one I'm using, I'm going to file in prototype, I'm going to file configuration, change year from ZWCAD 2021 to 2020 or 2019. So what you can see immediately is that uh, ZWCAD Civil works with the latest free version of ZWCAD. So when they will release 2021 too, we will work with 2020, 21 and 2020. Any question about that one? Any questions? So oh, again, so sorry? No questions, no questions. So if we want to choose which drawing environment we use, we go, we open the prototype, we go to file configuration, and here we set up which drawing environment we are using. That's it if we have several. If not, we have to choose the one that we have. By default, ZWCAD Civil will know to identify which one you have, but sometimes if it does not load well, open the prototype and choose here. There are some others configuration here. We'll learn them about them later on. But for now, this is what we want to know. So we went to file configuration. Another thing that we can choose here is what is the default scale of our drawings. So if I go to drawing environment, it says global scale, one to 250. What does it mean? It means that all the text size, distance, a, a, a alignment will be adjusted to 250. 
Now the question will be, okay, I started my project with 250 and later on, I decided to print it at one to 1,000. Will it be a problem? No, you can change it as you go. In fact, you can change the scale of the text annotation for each type, for the road, for the pipes, for the topography. But this is the global and this is the default. This is what the system will use as default. You can change it or you can leave it like this. Usually I leave it like this. Okay, I'm happy with my prototype. I'm going to file, exit, save change to my prototype. It asks me if there's changes in the DWG, no. That's it. So what I'm asking all of you, take five minutes, open your ZWCAD Civil. If you don't have it, this is the time to download it. Ensure that you have the ZWCAD 2021 from the link which I shared with all of you on the chat. Open the ZWCAD Civil on your system. Then open the prototype project. How do to do it? File, open. By the way, there's a shortcut here, open prototype. So you can open it from here. Open prototype, no, no here. Go to file, configuration, and ensure that you are working with the right ZWCAD. Please take five, min fin five minutes for that. If you encounter problems, let us know. I hope you got it. Actually, I gave uh, this time also for most of you that maybe doesn't have it installed properly or anything. This is the time. Anyhow, let me continue. Unless you have any question about the prototype or no name, I'm moving to the next item of today's agenda. Any questions? If you have questions, don't try it because I cannot see the chat. I minimized it. Just speak up. If not, I will assume that we are okay. Good. So let me exit again because I'm in prototype. Save my changes. 
and relaunch the software. Good. So we started with introduction and we learned about the prototype anonym. Now let's talk a little bit about the coordinates editor. This is the drawing in mind. I'm starting my job by starting a new project. File, new project, every, it, it asks, did, do you want to save changes to no name? I will press always no unless I did something in no name by mistake and I want to save it as another file. So I press no. I have my own folder here on C, which I call it project. Everyone is entitled to do whatever you want. And I will call it beginners one. So I started a new project and I did it by creating a designated folder for the project. And in this folder, I also called the file name beginners one. So actually I created the folder and in, inside the folder, I created the, the project itself. So all my project files, which would be beginners one.tco, prj, dco, all the files that we saw before, we be stored on this folder. Fine, so you can see on the top, beginners one, this folder. This is a text editor. By the way, your ZWCAD is the standard ZWCAD. There's nothing here. Um, if I go to the topography coordinates here, the editor below, the editor below, this is the text editor. I hope most of you knows, no, no notepad or netpad plus or no uh, Excel. So all of these are editors. So this is the text editor, but this text editor is designated specifically for coordinates. Let me take it up a little bit. It has a column for point name. It has a color for easting or X if you like. Y for north, northing, Z for elevation and the code, well, a code, if you want, we use it. If not, this is not mandatory. In fact, Z is also, these two last two are not mandatory. So I'll start by point name. I'll create the first point, point number one, with the easting of 1000 on 1000. It's a local coordinate system, which I create with elevation of 50, I'm adding by enter. Number two, 150 on 1000 and elevation is 52.5. Number three, 110 on 110.567, no elevation. Number four, 1,000 at 1,050 and elevation is 54.3. So these are the four coordinates. Any question about what I did by typing the coordinates? Just entering the point number space to move to the next column, space again, space, and when I finish, enter. Fine, I want to see this point here. I press refresh. Here we are. So let's see what happened. The system took this list and converted it into DWG. In fact, each point is now a block this is a block, you can see, 
here, it's a block reference, which is in its insertion point is the exact location, 1,000 on 1,500. In fact, the insertion point is the decimal point. This is the insertion point of the block, this one. This is the exact location of the point. The same goes for the rest of the points. This is number four. What the system did, it created this block. The block itself sits in a layer named civil, but the text of the elevation sits in another layer. In fact, let's, let's see. Civil Z. And there's another one for for the name. So all this is sitting in designated layers. Uh, maybe in another lesson I can explain how to change the default, but this is not important now. So this is the default which the system uses. And it's standard layers, so a civil card, civil name is the name. Let's change it to this one. Sorry, not the name. Uh, let's change the colors. Ah, okay. C two. Uh, right. Okay, so you can see that it's changed. If I want to add another point, there's no problem. Let's say somewhere here, the coordinates, I can look here, the coordinates, it's around 127 to 135. So I'm going here, point number five, 127 at 135. If I want to give it elevation, 55. Refreshing. So what is this refresh button? Refresh button scan the list and refresh the drawing according to the list. Again, every time I do a change here, I want to see it on the drawing, I press the refresh button. Any questions so far? Uh, hello, Shlomi. I yes. have a question. Who is talking, so, please? Uh, uh, I'm Nilo from Philippines. Okay, yes, please. Yeah, so the point number three doesn't have a Z value. So right. uh, can we assume it as a zero elevation? Okay, the system give it zero on the display but when we create the surface later on, the contours, this will not be zero. This will be, in fact, in fact the system code it minus 5,000.555. You will not see it. Uh, this code which the system gives it in the background tells the system that when creating the surface, ignore the elevation of this point. Because okay. zero is the sea level. So there okay. is, such such an elevation. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. So this is only for display. Of course, if I put here zero, now it be, be becomes zero, real zero. In the display, it will, it will not affect, but in the surface, it will affect. I hope this is clear, and both of you that did not follow, it will be clearer later on when we create surfaces. So this is what we did. Other tricks which we can do here. You see there are many, many, many functions here. All of them are related to the list. For example, I want to trace a point. 
I see this point, number four. I want to see it on the screen. I press here, press this zoom to point on drawing, and that's it, it's in the center. By the way, the system creates a, 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 like this, this is be created in a layer name unused. Whenever you press refresh, unused is cleared. Or you can clear it by yourself. So again, if I want to trace number five, click here, here it's in the center. Now let's look the other way around. I want to trace number one in the list. You can see that on the side here, there is a list of function. This function relates from the drawing to the list of points. From here, it's from the list to the drawing. From here, it's from the drawing to the list. So if I press locate here, I'm going, it says single, single point. Whenever I come to it, it automatically on the object snap. Click, you see in the list? Automatically it became number one. Yeah, let me repeat it. Go to number three, click here. It goes to number three. But of course, this is a small list, but imagine a list of, uh, I don't know, 100,000 points, then this is very efficient. Now, for example, I clicked on this one. I came to this list, change it to 33 and press refresh. This button. It becomes 33. I hope this dynamic is understood. I hope this dynamic is well understood. Yes. Uh, what else can I do? I have many functions, will not learn all of it, but uh, I want to show you something. This point number three sits in this, I want to give it a name, non number three. So I can call it P, point number P. And I refresh, there's no problem. It will become P. And I want to call it P, P5. Still, there's no problem. As long as I don't give spaces, I can call it whichever. So this is fully alphanumeric. This is fully alphanumeric. You can give whichever name you want. I hope you understand. Good. What else? What else? Um, what else do I want to do? Uh, can I ask a question again? Please. Uh, how about the points from, let's say, total station? How can we put it? We'll, we will learn. We will learn very soon. Okay, okay. Okay. So we created some points here. Now I want to go to the drawing and create a point here from the drawing. You remember that I used this list. I used this list to walk on the drawing into the list. I used the locate to find a point, for example, this one. Now I'm doing another thing. Ah, what I'm doing now, I'm using pick. And pick says, create a new point, pick a new point. And the system is about to call it 1005, which is okay by me. I put it here. And you see here in the list, 1005 up here. Here in the list, 1006. Here in the list, 1007. Press and refresh. Here it is. Five, six, seven. Now, what else can I do? I can take 1005 and change it and call it sidewalk one. And this is sidewalk, oh, no, not sidewalk, line. This is line one, and this is line two, and 
this is line three. And I refresh, and I have line one, line two, line three. If I want, since this is a text editor, I can walk on bulks or block, what we call block of points. I can mark the first one with the shift in my keyboard. Hold the shift and press the last one. So now all of them I highlighted. I'm clicking the block here. Now I touched or captured all of them as block. So whichever change that I will do, it will affect all of them in the column, you see? You see what happened? All the names have changed. L1, L2, L3. And I refresh. L1, L2, L3. Now think of it. Um, let's take another example. Let's assume that we have a layer. And the layer name is the sidewalk. And I got it from my designer someone else which didn't use or, or used the WCAD civil to design, but I'm a, a surveyor and I want to extract point. So let's assume I receive it. We will repractice it later on, but I just want to give you the principle. And this is what he has given me, polyline. Let's say I got it from external file. And I want to create points along this. I'm using pick here. Let me use object snap. Let me use object snap and go to nearest. And I use pick and I continue. This is one point. Another point, another point, you can see below. Another point, another point, another point, another point, another point. Okay, good. I've created point along this line. Refreshing. Here are the points. Here are the points. Now I want to call them with a name. I'm going up to the first one, this one, until the last one. And I block it. And I renumber it with one on the block. So now all these points change your name to one, two, three, four, five. And since I'm still in the block, I'm going to the first, sorry, going from here. Sorry, from here to the first one, let's catch again the block. And I'm walking here and I will call it sidewalk. Good, can remove the block, refresh, fine. So all this is sidewalk one, side two, side three. Now I want to take all this and set it out, take all this file and save it as a standard text file. I'm pressing save here. I can save it as standard, I can save it with very various extension, reg, area, job file, which I think this is for Trimble, med, topcon, top tat station, Leica top tat station, GSI, Sokia CRD, but I will use the standard text file. And I will call it setting out points. Setting out a, a sidewalk, um, plus addition. If I will open now the standard 
and no, I put it in C projects. And I called it uh, today. I name it uh, beginners. Yes, beginners. Here it is. It's a standard file. If I click it, and let's open it with Notepad. This is a standard text file. You can usually 90% of the total station or GPS will receive it and be uploaded. Now I'm showing this because this is a very, it's a simple thing, but it's what we call day to day work of any construction company. Any construction company that need to set out or to arrange, they, we have like thousands of construction companies that what the surveyors are doing every day in the morning or day before they go, they open the project, they pick the points that they want to set out today, the junction or the side of the road or the path, path or the manholes of the sewage and they use it. So it's simple, but very practical. I hope you got it right. I hope you got it right. We'll practice it very soon. Uh, now let me continue. Let me continue. And what I want to do now is to add some more points which I read from a total station or I brought from the GPS and I have them as text file and I want to load and add them to my list. Of course, I can create a new project and create two new projects, or I can add it to this project. How do I do it? So since I didn't want, let's create such a, such a file. What I'll do, I'll enter again to the same C projects, beginners. And what I'll do, I'll create a, an Excel file. Excel, yeah. And I will call it the um, total station points. Total station is the surveying instrument, the one that I'm not familiar with the thing. So total stations points, it can be GPS point, you know what? Today, GPS is very popular, GPS points. And I got points. Uh, the first one would be GP1, and the easting would be, let's say, 1100 on 1100 and 1.32. And the second one would be GP2, and it would be 1005 on 1110. And the elevation will be 105.4. No, it cannot be 100 because all our project is around 50, 50.4. And this will be 50.7. And this is GP3. And this is 1,170 on 170. And this is 48.67. And this is GP4, uh, 1032 on 1010. And this is the elevation. This is a coordinate file. I'm just ensuring that there's enough space. I will save it. And now I will save it as a CSV. Save as. CSV, CSV, comma deleted or text deleted. I think comma deleted will work. Let's work with this comma deleted and let's see what happens. And save it. Good. I will now open my ZWCAT civil. We'll go to the end of the list, stand here, and press load. 
I will go to, okay. In fact, CSV, I don't need to do anything because it's the standard. So let's look for a CSV, here it is. Here it is, you can see. One, two, three, the points. I'll refresh. Let's, here we are. Okay, and let's trace GP1, stand here. Here it is. Any questions? Guys, gentlemen, ladies, Any questions? Good. Yes, please. I have no questions. Is it all good? I think it's very simple. You just have to practice, you get used to it. It's very powerful tool, very easy to use. And this is the beauty of it. So again, I created the CSV. I am, I've loaded it. I said it is, I've loaded it and loaded it here to my editor. Once pressing refresh, it will show. Very simple. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. If all is clear, let me continue with some other things. Let me continue with some other things. Uh, do you want uh, 10 minutes to practice? Quick one, uh, answers freely. Do you want to practice, doesn't want to, don't want yes. to practice? Yes, please. Okay, take five minutes, practice. If you encounter problems, I'm here. Try to do what I did. Start a new project in your own folder. You can call it beginners or whatever you like. Go to the topography coordinates, start typing coordinates and press refresh to see it on the drawing. Start with that. Then use the pick to add some new points. Start, start with it. Take five minutes. You have questions, I'm here.
Guys, if you have any questions, I'm here. Very important, when I save my job, I go to file, save project, or I can save it here with the shortcut. What happens when I save the project? The ZWCAT Civil save all the file associated with the project and create a DWG with the name of the project underscore DWG. This is very important. It creates a DWG with the name of the project underscore DWG. I hope you got it. Automatically. It's a standard DWG. You can open it. With the WCAT Civil, with the DWG viewer. Fine. Fine. Let's go to the next stage. All right. I want to practice more the issue of setting out points and to show you some other tricks. So I will open a new project, file, new project, save my job, yes. And I create another folder, name, beginners2. Beginners. So this is a new project. This is a new project. And I got my DWG from my designer. So what I'm gonna do now, I will go to the ZW card, open a DWG. I put it on my desktop. This is the DWG. I will soon send it, share it with you so you can practice. So this is the DWG which I've gotten. And today what I want to do is to set up points along this yellow lines, which are the sidewalks, this one. So what I'm doing, I'm using the same streak. Topography coordinates, pick. I want to start from this junction. Today I will do this junction. Here, 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 here. This is one side, pick from the other side. Here, other points. From here, 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 here. Oh, my mistake. Later on, I will remove this one. Okay. These are the list of points. Refresh. These are the points which I've created for setting out this junction. Let's zoom again. Here it is. Now this star one, I don't want it. 1038. Where is it? This one. I stand on it and click the eraser. And refresh. Okay, I cleared it. 
So this is ready. Uh, now I want to take all the points which are sitting on this line, on this side, to select them. I'm using locate, lower right corner, polygon in, I, at the command line. Select polygon. Let's start from here. Let me remove the objects now. And C for closing. Good. What the system did, it traced all the points within this polygon, you see, and highlight them. So I'm using the block on the right. I'm using the block on the right. And I'll first of all number them, auto number, starting from one. And let me pick them again up till here. Still the block is on. I will call them junction one underscore and northwest. So all these points are associated to the northwest corner. I'm using again, locate. I'm still in block mode, there's no problem. In, I. We remove the objects now. From here. Here, here. And close. It's a block. Auto number it from one. Mark the first one. Go to the last one. Call it junction one. A north east. Refresh. Here it is. Now, you see the text size? It's overlapping. You remember we talked about the scale. The system adjusts the scale of the text to print at one to 250. Again, the system adjusts the scale of the text here to be printed at 250. You remember, 250, this is the scale. I want to make it smaller. So what I'll do, I'm going to the options here. And change this to smaller. Let's say 150. Pressing OK and pressing refresh. Now I think it's smaller, which is better for me because it's not overlooking. I can still print it to 250 if I want to go to the field, not just with the coordinates, but also with a printout, there's no problem. It just means that the text is smaller. And so on, I can do the same here. I can so this, do the same here. And again, save it to my total station for setting out. Any questions about what I've done? No questions. No questions. Okay. What else can I do? Now, I want to filter a complete layer or entity. For this, I'm going to topography. Sorry. I'm going to general, 
filtering. Let me open the tutorial again. I'm going here to the filtering. And it asked me, what do you want to filter? I want, which layer do you want to filter? Which layer do you want to filter? And I tell the software I want to fill, to scan, to filter all the layer of this one, 2401. How do I do it? Select, select one entity of the layer and press enter. Automatically the system says it's 2401 is a, and it's a polyline, lightweight polyline, not 3D. I press apply. You see the filtering is going on here. says filtering point, filtering data. Still going on, be patient. Let's refresh. What the software did, so it's, it's filtered all the points at the vertex along all the polylines on this layer. You see here, here. So the system actually here, well, a lot, because that's, it's a bricked vertexes. Each vertex that the system identified, each vertex that the system identified along, along the layers which I've chosen, 2,401, with a polyline, each vertex of it got a point with a serial number. In fact, if you look here on the right side, 2,339 points was filtered. Not exactly because we had some more points in the beginning, but about that number. Many points all along this. So now I can, I can automatically save it like this or to set that up, or I can organize it. For example, uh, locate again in all the points uh, around, sorry, all the points in this polygon. Well, now in the block, let's see, where is it? Here it is. This block, make it as a block. And all this point, for example, save them. All this data. So I'll call it area, save it. And I create a coordinate file of only this area, call it area one. And only the points here would be saved as area one, and now I can go and set them out in the field. Any questions? Any questions? No questions. Thank you. Now, once I save, everything is being now saved as beginner. So I can close this if I want to show you something. Now, since I saved the project, all the entities of the drawing were also saved. So if I go now, and open beginners two. the DWG is supposed to be stored as well. Here it is. Okay, I don't need to reopen. Everything is here. The points, the DWG, everything associated. 
Okay, what's next? What's next? Now, now what I want you to do, what I want you to do is to load another file of points. Or you want to practice this. You know what? Let's keep the practice now. Let's continue. Later on, I will share. Meanwhile, what I can do is share the, this file with all of you. Just let me do it so you can download it and practice later. So everyone, I shared now this DWG. You can practice with it. Make sure that you repeat what I did. Good. Now, in the where the if you go to C documents, where the software is installed, you'll find samples. I'm going now to sample seven. These are all the files of the project of sample seven. And if I go to a file named TCO, this one, it's a standard text file. The one that you got from a GPS total station. Okay. I will use this now for our next training. So file, new project. projects and create it as beginners free. Inside beginners free. So it's a new project. And now I got my point from a total station. The same one that you saw, sample seven TCO. I press here. I go to the same documents. ZWCAD samples, sample 70 CO, and look for CO. Here it is. Now you can see the points. These are the points of the TCO. They are here. In fact, there are how many points? 308. I'll refresh. Here, here we are, all the points were loaded into here. Now I want to take all these points and create contour lines out of them, what we call create surface, a 3D surface. I'm going to topography, contours, And there's a window on the right. On the right side window, I define the intervals, the vertical intervals between the points. Let's say contours each 0 0.25 meter. And I press apply. Here it is. The software created a 3D surface with contour lines each 0 0.25 meter. The software created contour lines each 0 0.25 meter. In fact, I have a 3D surface now. That means that if I'm using the same style that we used before, you remember this peak and pick somewhere here now inside the contours. I don't need to touch the contour, I can just pick it here. Now it's in 3D. So I would get the X, Y, but also the Z. Z value of this point. Let's refresh, here it is. Again, here, for example, let's pick again, pick. Pick here, refresh. This is the point. Any questions about this one? 
Any questions? No questions. No questions. Yeah, I see that the guy from Infosys doing it very fast. What about the rest of you? <laughs> so also we get maybe others has some questions. Anyone? Lodi, are you following it up? Okay. Good. So we created the 3D surface using a very simple thing. We went into topography, contours, and create the points. Good. So what I'm asking you to do now is to take five minutes and practice it. Again, if you have the system installed, start a new project, call it beginners free, then go here to the lower editor, press the lower left button to load the file sample seven TCO, refresh, go to topography contours and create contours. Everybody, please take 10 minutes to practice before I continue. So the process will be start a new project. I call it beginners okay. to load text file using the lower left a, a load from text file button. Load the file. It's in your document. Samples. Sample seventy cell. Number three. Refresh. Upper button or to the left or to the left. Number five. Topography coordinates contours, sorry, from the main menu. Enter intervals of zero point twenty five and press apply. Yeah, you have it here. Just practice, take five minutes to practice. Try to be in the same position where I am. If you have problems, let me know.
Shlomo, can you please share the uh, TCO file? I have yeah. installed. I have yeah. installed the trial version. There isn't any samples folder. There is. There is. See what I just answered to you. Okay. Let me know if you found it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. The um, sample seven sits in documents, not in the program files. There are two folders of the software. One which is in um, program files, where the exe is sitting in the DLLs, or the system itself. And one in um, C documents.
hidden file, related file inside documents. Um, Lodi, do you have the ZWCAD Civil installed? Lodi? Hello? Yes? Yeah. I have a 10.2 correction. ZWCAT uh, CVL. Right. And did you find it in inside documents? Yeah, there is a no, no folder. No inside folder? Yes. Inside your documents. Can you share the screen? Yes, yeah, sure. Please share your screen. Wait, wait, I will allow you to share. Uh, and yeah, show your share your screen, please. Yes, Wait a second. Here, yeah. document. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Once again. Um. You went into documents. So yeah, in uh, program file. Mm -hmm. Document here. Okay. If you go to program files, what do you see? Is uh, only this program. If you go files, to program files, uh, uh, yeah, uh, oh, you have it. Go inside. Get CPL folder. Mm -hmm. And Everything when I okay. Open. There is no folder. Inside okay. It. Go to yeah, C. Doc no go inside. go to documents no again. Folder. Go no to C. Folder. Yeah. Go to C, please. No, no. Let me show your screen. Okay. Go to your screen again. Go to C. Yes. I don't yeah. see your screen. You will stop sharing. Can you share? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. One second. Uh, here. One second. One second. It's still loading. File. I don't see. One. One second. There's a communication gap. It's try to. Okay. Mm. Bandwidth does not allow me to see your screen. Oh, now I can see it. Go to okay. see. A, where is your documents? Users, go to users. Not program files, users. Lodi, yeah. Go to Lodi. Okay. Documents. Here it is. is it? Right. Yeah. It's already. Here it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The users. Uh. Sorry. Oh, Lodi, I cannot hear you. Oh, I see. <laughs> OK. 
Claudia I cannot hear you are breaking all all the time Eden yeah maybe you can write Okay, I I can see I can see the folder. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Okay. From users, yeah. I, I already found this. Thank you, Mr. Sifan. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. From the users, users, right? Okay, users, document. Okay, did anyone encounter problems with loading the file or creating the contour lines? Anyone beside Lodi? What about the rest of you? Jimmy, are you okay? I'm fine. Good. Hatik, are you okay? Hatik, uh, Jian. I, I, I have trouble in displaying the lines and dots or coordinates uh, on my screen on ZW kit, but um, I am using laptop, so my screen is too small. So I will try later with my desktop. Okay. I can see the, the uh, names of or coordinates of the uh, dots or I can't see the, I tried to make the contours, but I couldn't see it in my ZWK screen. But since it's laptop, I have very short, limited uh, space. Yeah, maybe what you want to do is uh, try to uh, try to change resolution at least to 1366 to 768, at least. You, you mean in civil kit? No, no, no. I'm talking about the resolution, the resolution of the screen. Screen, okay. I try to work with higher resolution, it would look better. Okay. Fine. So we had the one one second. Let's see that everybody's here again. Yeah. So I hope you can still see my screen. Let's see what actually happened when we created the contours. Let's see what happily actually happened when we created the contours. If I go to topography contours and I click here, show triangles and press apply, the system will create a layer of what we call team. Team. Teen is what we call triangles irregular network. It means that each point is connected to its nearest point in such a way 
that the entire area is covered and there's no overlapping triangles. Again, each point is connected to two, its two nearest points to create a triangle in such a way that there is a full coverage of the area and there are no overlaps. What's important about TIN is that, let me remind you that in geometry, each triangle, like this for example, create a surface, define a surface. If two points defines a line, three points define a surface, right? This is a 3D surface, this TIN. It's a 3D surface which created from a point with the elevation 234.99, 234.50, 234.50, and 234.34. This one we call it a tin. In fact, what the system does, it creates in the background the surface of triangles, a surface which is compiled with all the triangles that you see here in 3D. On each triangle like this, since it's a surface, it can do by interpolation the contour line. So in fact, the contour line is a collection of interpolation from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and so on and so forth. And this is exactly what we see here in the contour lines result, like this example. In fact, when I go to topography coordinates and I pick inside somewhere here in the middle, what the system does, it goes to the relevant triangle and using the surface of this triangle, interpolate the point in 3D. So what's important to know is that the triangles exist in the background all the time, even if we don't show the triangles. Even if I'm walking like this, like I walked in the beginning, the team or the triangles exist. The surface exists. It's just that I decided not to display it. I hope it's not too complicated to understand, but this is the principle of a surface. So again, now this, it's very important because Listen, this triangle, so this thing is what create the contours. It's what cre will create sections later on. It will what create uh, volumes for air force calculation later on and so on and so forth. So it's very important that this thing will be okay. For example, let's take this point, 44. How do we do it? Remember, I can, one second. Okay, I'm using the locate here, clicking on this point. Here it is, this is the point, number 44. And let's assume there's an error here. And the elevation by mistake was read from the total station like this, 26. Let's refresh it. Problem in topography coordinates 44. High difference is too big. Do you want to continue? So automatically when I refresh, after reading from the total session, the system identified there is a problem, abnormal behavior of the point. If I continue, this is the point, and if I continue and create the surface on the topography on the right, now all the surface will change accordingly. See what happened? It creates contours from 238 to this point, which is 26. So there's 200 meter difference in very short path. And this is what creates the problem. 
how to rectify it. Very simple. Going here, see the point, locate it. This is the point. I got it in the list. I ever remove it, delete it if I don't know the elevation. Or if I can assume that there is a mistake here, like this point, the three is missing. Click here, refresh, and apply. And now the surface would be okay. I hope you got it. Any questions? Any questions about this one? This is very important because later on we'll use it. Last thing that I want to show you now is something that we call quick sections. If I go to design sections, there's a window on the right. I click the peak and I select the first point, let's say from here up till here, up till, you know what? I'll choose from this point, from this hill. Let's remove the object snap. From here till here. I've got a section from point A to point B. So this is a section. This is the starting point coordinates, the end point coordinates. This is the first hill going to the stream. <laughs> Going back to the second hill, I see the elevations and the distance. If I want to create a DWG from it, I press here. It will export it into what we call DXF. This is a quick section. We'll talk more about sections later on, but this is a very quick section from point A to point B. By the way, it's its scale factor is one to 10. This is 10, sorry, 10 to one. If I change it to five, here it is. Well, if you want one to one, this is the actual section. This is one to one. The height difference from here to here is not so big. Let's make it one to 10 again. Let's save it at a scale of 1 to 100 in the height, 1 to 1,000 in the length, and call it section And let's um, this is the section which I was talk about talking about. Okay. I hope this is clear. I hope you got it. Uh, I finished my training for today. Unless you have question, we are meeting again in a week time from now. So it will give you enough time to practice, try other samples. You have a lot of samples there. Uh, okay. no, no. Yes. yes, please. Uh, can we have uh, like a trial license for us to evaluate? Uh, because for me, my evaluation days are over. We, I have we, zero days left to evaluate the software, so I cannot use it 
unless I have uh, something like trial license, can you provide for us? Maybe a trial license like for seven days or something like that? Is this Infrasys? Yes, Infrasys, yes. Yeah, Infrasys, I provided the NFR for you like five licenses. So, oh. uh, okay. uh, so April has like five license thing. Uh, okay, thank know. you. Okay, so just check if you still have problem, let me know. Guys, thank you very much.